guys, what's up? This is Sean Gordon. Today we're going to take a look at Brad Hoyt's harp guitar from Sound Iron. This is a quick walkthrough of my demo called Determination. Let's take a listen. So aside from the harp guitar, which is actually doing most of the stuff here, uh, I've got uh, a percussion section, um, the Apocalypse percussion. Here, let's uh, listen to that real quick. You know, you can see it's just kind of keeping the backbeat. The main beat is these drums here, which I kind of just threw together myself. So you can see it's kind of like uh, dubstep played by a rock drummer, I suppose. And then I have a simple bass guitar. And then there's the orchestra, you know, adding the magic. And then like a simple sweep here at the beginning. Now that you know what's going on in the background, let's focus on this harp guitar. So the first thing I'm using is the strums here. So what I did was I loaded the harp guitar auto strummer right here. You might be wondering why the keys are all colorized down here. There's a reason for all this. Everything you see here in black, those are key switches. So these don't actually play notes. You know, if you hit it with the keyboard, you're not gonna hear anything. Basically the key switches are just little different active modes. So if I were to hit this D key switch, whatever I programmed for that key switch is going to happen when I perform over here. Okay, so then if I were to go to F, anything I programmed to this F key switch is going to happen when I play over here. So this is just kind of switching between banks, if you will, or programs, if you want to look at it that way. Okay, so next we have the big strums. So hit it once and it strums, depending on which key switch is activated. I'll show you how to program these in a second. Okay, next we have the five strings of the harp guitar right here. They're all in different color, so you can kind of see the difference. So if you were to change this chord to D, you'll see it's going to be each note in the D chord here. If I were to go to F, this right here, if you hold it down, is an auto strummer, so watch. And these right here are basically key switches uh, for this auto strummer. 
Um, depending on which one you hit, it does a different uh, rhythm pattern, which can be also be programmed. So basically you hold it down with your right hand and then you change the chord over here with your left hand. Okay, so having all that in mind, what I did for this track was I went here to the strumulator. Boom. Even though it may look a little overwhelming, it's actually pretty simple to understand. These are all the key switches down here. Okay, so D1, D sharp one, E1, F1. So that's the, basically here. So if you wanted to change this to be some other chord, it doesn't even need to be D. It could be anything you want it to be. Um, but I like to keep it kind of organized so that way while I'm performing, I don't get mixed up. Um, so what you would do to program this D1 thing, so every time you hit this here, it's going to activate D minor chord. Okay, so these key switches are all set. And how you set them is you choose things here and then you assign them here. So for instance, if I wanted to do a C minor seventh chord, it is now reading a C minor seventh chord on the harp guitar's five strings. And then I would press wherever I want to assign it here. So say I wanted it to be D1. Now it's assigned there. And then maybe I go over here to E, and I'm like, oh no, I, I clicked that to C minor on accident. Let's go back to E major. So now it's reading the chord, and I assign it by clicking there. So be careful when you're clicking around over here. Just play with it a little bit, and you'll, you'll figure it out right away. And that's it. So let's take a look at the performance. So this is the actual performance that you can watch, but um, more importantly, look over here and see that I'm only hitting this chord button and using these key switches to change the chord in between. And then I hit these as a little glissando, which you can see here, just to kind of add a little realism. Um, and that's pretty much it for this section. So let's take a listen. Make sure you add a key switch at the beginning of anything that you play. So see how I added one here? So that way when this chord is played, it knows that it's this. You might forget about that. Say I played this chord here, right? And then I go back here and I want to start from the beginning. See it's playing that same chord because that's the last key switch that was activated. I need to make sure that I go over here before this key switch so it knows that it's really supposed to be playing D. So if you hear a funky chord coming out of nowhere uh, while you're like playing around in Wonderland, that's probably why. Next we have the plucky lead. It goes like this. So all that really is, is the harp guitar tune percussion light. And what I did was I just kind of came in here to the uh, effects rack. I like the way it sounded. So I went to the effects rack. So right here is your pedal board. And um, you turn them on or off with the little power buttons here. So you have a chorus, dynamics, which is compression type stuff, drive and all that. Um, so what I used for this was I just added some delays and reverb. And I set it to my liking. I'm a guitarist myself, and um, you know, I wanted to emulate, you know, maybe like a little lead line that I might have played on my actual guitar. Let's uh, take a look at what I did there. So first, I went to the advanced performance light. I loaded that in, and you can see I have a few more things going on in this one. So I started with the the basic sound with nothing on it, and that sounds like this. So what I did was I added some drive and you can pick the kind of drive you want. Distortion worked for me so I just left it there. 
you know, added this amp, EQ, I dropped a little bit of the lows and then delay to add, you know, space and coolness, reverb for the same thing. And then it sounds like this. So you can hear that I kind of did a few guitar-y type of things, like bends, which is really easy. I just used the, the mod wheel. And you can see like as it starts, I use the mod wheel to kind of bend up, as you would on the guitar string. And then some vibrato at the end, because that's what I would have done if I was on my electric guitar. I would have hit the note here, boom and then start shaking it a little bit, you know, to add some emotion, so. So, pretty cool. So next is the uh, percussion. You know, like everybody's doing nowadays on the guitar, the gorpa, and harp guitar has absolutely included that awesomeness into this plugin, so. Let's take a listen to the hymn. All I did was turn the reverb on and it was fine. I didn't even have to like set anything here. All right, next up are the palm mutes. So I performed this myself on the keyboard just because I really wanted something that wasn't the same over and over. So here's what I did. This is using the tuned percussion light. So super simple, it's just something, you know, to add rhythm. Next we have the big hit. So all this is, is one hit, it sounds like this. And it's just to add some coolness, like every now and then when I thought it needed it. All right, so what that is, is the advanced performance I just went down here to the effects rack. I put on some drive under distortion. Um, I did play around, I tried all these out, ended up using the distortion. And uh, the amp, played with a few, ended back up on uh, Tweed Green here, dropped some of the bass because it you know, got a little warbly, and added some distortion to add that epic trancey sound. Almost sounds like a piano, like a distorted piano. Which leads us to the piano guitar. <laughs> and so this passage, I just loaded up the harp guitar tuned percussion. Let's see. Uh, ended up using cab, delay, some drop some of that bass on the EQ, and then reverb. And it's basically just a simple performance like a, a pianist would do. And that is, that is all it is. It sounds just like a piano, which is kind of cool. Uh, next are just some swells, which uh, you can hear here. <clears throat> and for those, the advanced performance again. And I mess with the, the attack and the release. You can see there's no attack, so that way it actually sounds like a swell and it's not like a hit or a pluck or anything like that. Tightness, same thing. And then I have this harpsichord sounding thing. So I only use this in the bridge. Um, sounds like this.
And finally, we have the low arpeggios that I did for the bridge section as well. And this just repeats over and over and over. got the advanced performance again and uh, messed with the attack a little bit so it wasn't so bright and harsh um, release tightness you just dial it in till it sounds right to you for this section I really wanted something soft and uh, that pretty much does it for this demo um, I'm just gonna go ahead and play out only the harp guitar stuff all together and you can check all that out how it kind of mixes and mingles together and make sure to go check out soundiron.com. Check out some of their other plugins as well. They have so many cool sounds. All the weird stuff. You know, obviously harp guitar is one of those weird things, which is definitely down my alley. Check them out, and I will see you guys next time. Sean Gordon, over and out. Mm -hmm.